Okay, welcome everybody. John Levine is Success Mastermind. It is Tuesday again, believe it or not, the 13th of July, day before Bastille Day, French celebration, big public holiday there tomorrow, a celebration of the French Revolution. So we'll wait to see who dials in. Uh, we're just gathering as the group, the John Levine is Success Mastermind, for anyone that's looking at the recording group of like-minded people trying to support each other in their various endeavors. The theory being it's better to do it as a group than go it alone when the going gets tough and you can get support, you can get ideas, you can get help. And I've got to say, it really does work. I'm sure Edward would say that. He's coming. Stefan's there. Great to see Stefan and Suzanne. Yeah, Edward, we were just talking about the fact that a mastermind group is designed to carry you through when the going gets tough and you need some thoughts and ideas. And Stefan's waving. Great to see him. Absolutely. Look, yeah. So we'll, we'll be sharing our ideas today. I'm going to start off on the basis that people are still dialing in, but we'll, we'll try and get going. I'm just going to mute the microphones. So we are all muted. Hopefully you can still hear me. That's the general idea. A um, bit of housekeeping before we start off. The Great EVA tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern Time US. That's 10 p.m. in the UK, 11 p.m. in Europe. Um, on Corporate Curios, which is a great session for management, personnel, personal issues, generally, generally lots of tips and hints really practically about how to do things, how to cope with situations, how to assert yourself, everything you can imagine. Everything you can imagine has come up in those sessions. So thank you, Ivy uh, Five o'clock tonight, Eastern Time, if anyone is free and uh, 10 p.m. in the UK. So I was going to start off. Uh, while people still dial in. Funnily enough, the discussion was not inspired by the weekend's soccer championship final. I'd actually written my notes before that happened, but it's quite apposite, uh, as it turns out. But it definitely was not inspired by the match. And I'm not criticising any team uh, in what I'm about to say, because I really wrote this before that match. Um, and by the way, I thought everyone did a great job and both teams put their heart and soul into it, which is all you can do, really. The best you can do, you can't be criticised for. So I, um, I really wrote these notes over the last couple of weeks following great discussions I've had with some great people in this group and outside of this group. But people who I've noticed are not daring to win. They're not thinking to succeed or Perhaps they're not confident to climb or they don't think they know how to fly. They don't think they know how to fly. Well, they actually do. And that's why I'm calling the, uh, the topic today to stand on the edge of greatness. Uh, because I think that's exactly where a lot of people really are, but they may not recognize it. It's a daunting thing to stand on the edge of greatness. Um, but what, what's the greater waste or pity than not to sail over the edge of the flat earth, as we used to call it? What is a greater waste or pity than not to sail over the edge of that flat earth uh, that just keeps sailing, in other words, in constantly ever decreasing circles in the known world? Think back to medieval times where they had no idea what was out there, but they still went for it. They still sailed over the edge. What a pity if you just never try that. They never would have got to America, for example. What a pity if they just stayed in the Mediterranean, stayed in the uh, immediate Atlantic sea border. Sometimes for great things, you've got to step into the unknown. And it's a terrible shame not to step out of the pool of light, that crowded pool of light I talked about recently under the street lamp. We just don't know what's outside of that ring of light. You have to look sometimes and darkness can be quite fearful. It's not familiar, it's, it's daunting. Um, but you know, really everyone we know and all of us here particularly are full of unrealized potential in my view, in my humble opinion, but this, what we're living is the story of normal, everyday human life. It's the could have, it's the would have, it's the should have. How many times do we hear that? How many times have we said that, regretting things we haven't done or completed? And for some of us, unfortunately, that is going to remain our story unless we take really decisive and deliberate action. In other words, decisive and deliberate, not wishy-washy. This is not the time to be self-effacing put yourself second, put yourself in the background, not the time to be putting that development time, that me time in second place. Um, as a Swedish diplomat, a famous Swedish diplomat called Dag Hammarskjöld put it, 
to reach perfection, we must all pass one by one through the death of self-effacement. And that really sums it up for me. We all go through this imposter syndrome, this feeling of self-effacement where we just want to melt into the background, not put ourselves forward, not be the centre of attention, not go for greatness. It happens a lot. And we can just so easily keep on doing that, putting ourselves and our personal development second, or really what that means is last, because second here is effectively last. It doesn't get us anywhere near our target. So we really need to learn to express our needs and our wishes, to dare to try, to dare to even ask for something, to dare to actually assert ourselves and to dare to dive in if we're going to step over the edge um, while we're there on the edge of greatness. C.S. Lewis put it this way. Uh, he said, we are what we believe we are. And we've talked about that so many times in the group. We are what we believe we are. We can throw the switch and dare to assert ourselves believe in it and actually show it. And then you'd be amazed at how much would start to happen. So if we, if we actually don't do that, if we don't believe, or we just keep rubbing ourselves out of the, pink, the picture, the drawing, or we blend into the background as much as we can get away with, that is a personal choice. It's a choice we make, not somebody else. And believe me, from what I've seen of life, not many people are gonna come along and talk you out of that choice. They're not gonna tell you to go for it. They're quite happy that you don't put yourself forward. Unfortunately, that is the nature of some people's mindset. It really is up to us to change the mindset we have and our own behavior to make the choice because it is a choice. Put ourselves forward, not rub ourselves out. It's a choice. Buddhist saying puts it this way. I lost myself trying to please everyone else. Now I'm losing everyone while I find myself. Now, that's it for me. That is it. It's time to find yourself and to lose everybody else in the nicest possible way by prioritizing at least a part of the time you're allocating to life every day. So let's go out and find ourselves at last, because for some of us, it's been a heck of a long time of waiting. Let's go out and find ourselves. Let's go on that lovely journey of discovery. Let's sail over the edge of the flat earth, as I put it earlier, and let's see what's out there. Looking for a second at the pandemic, you know, it's been terrible and destructive and a shocking thing that we never expected to happen to us. It's changed the potential course of many, many, many lives. And it's done this really just by changing the preordained course of life as we knew it. And it's done it by opening up new thoughts and horizons. Sometimes I'm afraid through force because we've been pitched into bad situations and change. And sometimes because we've chosen to act on the change that's happened around us. But however predictable this pandemic was and unexpected it was, it has definitely rerouted life's rivers. It's diverted streams. It's caused us to wake up. Whole streams of consciousness have been diverted. And it's caused us to reflect on our current states. Everyone I speak to, I think, has reflected on the state of their life and what they've done with it to this point and our intentions for the future based on those thoughts. And it's caused us to reflect perhaps more on the why. Why on earth are we doing what we're doing and why? Why in the future? What would that why be in the future? What answer am I going to give in 10 years if I make changes now? So what the pandemic has really done on the good side, despite the terrible nature of it and what it's done to the world, it's shone a torch on the path to fulfillment. That's how I describe it to myself. It's shone a torch on the path to fulfillment, should we choose to take it. The torch is shining clearly a pencil beam down that path because of what's happened. But we now have a choice to take the path or not and follow that pencil beam. We can't always see what's on either side of the path. And in the distance, it may look quite dark. Um, but, you know, let's not waste this hidden opportunity. It was a hidden opportunity that came out pretty early on in the pandemic when we all started to think and act and go online and do things. Hidden opportunity suddenly leapt out of this and a lot of us grabbed it an unexpected opportunity to change. And boy, have we already seen this because original members of this group have already been diversifying and switching and pivoting their whole life. And we now have writers in the group, coaches, importers, retailers, Amazon sellers, consultants, you name it, you name it. And I would love when I open the floor, please, to hear from some of you about whether this would have happened without the pandemic. Would you have done this without the pandemic? What changed for you when the pandemic started unfolding and how did you actually use this 
fracturing of the old order, as I'll put it, to stand on the edge of a new era and take the plunge? What did it take? What happened? I'd love to hear that because I think it would inspire other members of the group and other people watching this on YouTube. So please share in a minute. Um, let's also remember as part of this, he or she who dares wins, very famous phrase, which UK people in particular will recognize. It really is there for the taking. It's daring to grab it. He or she who dares wins. So what is stopping us? What is it that's stopping us? We have to work that out for ourselves. It's different in every one of our cases. Is it, for example, fear? Is it disorganization? Is it a lack of clarity, a lack of commitment? Or fifth, too many commitments. And we've just been talking about that. Janet and I just had a debate about loving knowledge and going down every opportunity route that we can find because we love the knowledge and we love to know everything. Um, that can sometimes lead to having too many commitments and as John would put it, going down too many rabbit holes. But we can look at all of those problems and others and tackle them and say, yes, that is my problem. That is my issue that's blocking my, my forward route down this path that the beam is clearly shining down. These are the things obstructing the path for me. I can shovel them off like clearing snow but there's always an identifiable reason for this lack of progress. And all of it comes from inside us, not outside of us. Often it's inside us. We like to think or perhaps explain things by saying it's coming from outside, but I'm afraid we need to look closer to the home quite often. It's quite often in us all. In me, I'm very aware of it. And all these things, all these blocks, these things I've just listed, and there will be others in some other cases, they're created by our minds, our imagination, our conditioning and our preconditioning, which we've also talked about before, we're preconditioned to think a particular way. And we carry on thinking that way without question, just being held in by momentum sometimes, but we can recondition, we can rewrite, we can reprogram ourselves whenever we think and whenever we want. And that's we is the operative term that whenever we want to do it, whenever we think we want to do it, and we give ourselves the chance, we can reprogram and recondition and rewrite the future very definitely. And I also talked as part of that process a few months back about the fact that we're competing with ourselves. We're not competing with anybody else. Forget everybody else. We're competing with ourselves. We're on our own journey. And yes, as I said a while ago, our biggest competitor is still us, you and me. We're competing with us. So when we do something, we are capable of staying on track or knocking ourselves off track ourselves. And I mentioned the new Wimbledon champion, Novak Djokovic, when I mentioned this a while back. He was ranked num world number one. He'd just been disqualified from a tournament. He put himself out of the tournament by getting annoyed. Match wasn't going well. He wasn't happy with his performance. He lashed out with a racket, ended up hitting an umpire with a ball and got disqualified. But he did it to himself. He was the most skilled tennis player in the world an easy winner of the championship and the match. But despite that endless preparation, trial, practice, thought, mindset, psychology, fitness, whatever it was, he lost control at that moment and he was out. So if we can just control ourselves and our own positivity in our day and our routine, we're gonna stay in that race. So we have to try not to disqualify ourselves and be very conscious of the fact that it's so easy to do that just by not turning up properly, controlling our day properly, or going back to those blocks I mentioned just now, allowing them to remain in front of us rather than putting them behind us. So that all sounds great, but you know, this all takes a very definiteness of purpose and commitment to complete the journeys we're on. We really do have to give it our all. It ain't easy. So to me, looking at an image, we need to put the car into gear and jam down the accelerator with gusto. Isn't that right, Stefan? We can talk about cars and jam the accelerator down. I love the image. You are a Ferrari, Stefan. Would you jump into a Ferrari and gingerly press the accelerator with one toe if I gave you a drive? If I turn up with a Ferrari and say, here it is, would you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take this really carefully. I'm going to pootle down the drive and then put it back in the garage. I don't think you would. I think if we got the chance right now to sit in life's Ferrari right in front of us and we opened that door, we should get in and ram down the accelerator. We'd feel pretty stupid if we got back out of the car later for our only chance at driving it and we didn't take it. And just remember, those unfortunate people described at the end of their life journeys as having striven to be mediocre and having almost achieved it. 
We don't want to be one of them. I certainly don't want to be one of them. I'd like to think that whether I messed this up or not, I gave it my best and I gave it a good shot. I really had a good go. It's better to dare, perhaps, and to crash the Ferrari than never leaving the garage. What do you think? Should you stay in the garage or just risk it? Go for it. Drive it. You know, some people do prefer to stay parked up in the garage and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't criticize anyone for that, but better to discover that now rather than realizing too late that actually you were not a garage kind of car that you should have taken it out of the garage. Because if you discover that later and you don't give it proper thought now, you're going to regret it. We're all going to regret it. So what other things can we focus on and standing on the edge of greatness and getting over that edge and sailing off the edge of the known world? Well, it's worth remembering that big moments are also sometimes the small moments. It's not the big things. It's the small things very often that can get us forward. Great conclusions can come from the smallest things, from the small daily incremental changes. And I wanted to talk briefly about the Sky Cycling team. I don't know if anyone in the States is familiar with it. This is a big, big, powerful team in the Tour de France, which is the elite race in cycling in the world. Now, they had never had a British winner. Um, they set up a team to achieve a British winner in this race. That was the original um, idea of it. And they, they literally set up from scratch to win these championships. And now for the last 10 years, having embarked on this journey a while ago, they really have dominated the race with many, many stage wins and wins. And before 2010, no team had ever produced a British Tour de France winner of the French Tour de France. They did it. They did it. They hired a new coach. They said, let's just start again. They hired a new coach. He got his head around it and said, look, instead of bashing his head against a brick wall of historic competition, trying to do it their way, he built a new wall and he did it brick by small brick from the ground up. And believe me, as we'll hear in a minute, victory was in the smallest details, piled like small bricks, one on top of the other, but in the end, amounting to a very substantial wall at the end of the whole process. And no detail was too small for them. Nothing they did was too small to focus on. And what they called this process was the aggregation of marginal gains, the aggregation of marginal gains. In other words, many small gains, when they added them together, could lead to a significant overall result, to a win of a whole championship, an elite championship. And the, 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 the new coach, Brailsford, described this as breaking down everything and every process they could think of and improving that process by only 1%, but resulting in a significant overall increase when they put all those things back together again. So tiny things clumped together, in his view, can make the difference between winning and losing. And they won a lot. And, and they won a lot, not just with one cyclist. They could have said, let's focus on paying big money, getting the best cyclists in the world, and we're going to win somehow. Let's just go head to head with the competition. They didn't do that. They repeated this process with many, many British cyclists and got many, many winners from different cyclists. Because the process worked. And that's what we can all apply to our own journey right now to get over the edge, step over the edge, and get where we want to be. Because under this philosophy, every single small thing you do has to be examined and analyzed and everything then understood for the place it plays and what you can do to improve it. And the attitude of that team, the Sky team, was summed up by one of the coaches of one of the top cyclists who won in a very marked way. He worked on the basis that everything they did was probably wrong, not probably right. He suspended belief and said, everything we're doing is probably wrong. So what can we do about it? Not everything's great. Let's make some tweaks. Let's assume everything we do is probably wrong. He then said, there are sure to be better ways of doing things. Pretty much every day we do things differently. So they weren't afraid to just have a different go from a different angle and change everything every day. And they made those 1% improvements on each process and they won, and they won many times with many people. And how many of us have got this mindset? And then as opposed to that, how many of us are in stasis, being held back or crushed by the accepted order, the way we've always done things? How many times have I heard that in business? I can't even tell you how many times my heart has sunk when I've heard a service provider or somebody saying, we've always done it this way. 
because you're not going to see anything spectacular when you hear that. That is holding us back. We need the sky mentality that everything we're doing is probably wrong. So what can we do about it to make it better? What they did, just to give you a few examples, they worked on the drag created by the bicycles, the clothes and the helmets. They took their mattresses and pillows everywhere with them. So they got the best sleep with the same bedding. They color coded the water bottles and other drinks to save time. So you could see what it was straight away. They built a very special team bus with all the facilities they needed. The list is really, really endless. They focused on the minutest of seemingly mundane, unimportant things. But when they added them up, boy, were they significant. They then relentlessly examined the data on every single rider's performance and fitness. So they understood everything about every rider. And what that then allowed them to do was to see the overall performance of the whole team and manage it as a whole in a whole race. And that meant the difference between racing against somebody else or racing your race the way you wanted to race it at your own optimum performance for you and your team, no matter what everyone else is doing, no matter whether they appear to be pelting ahead of you at that moment, which is what I was getting at earlier when I said you're on your own journey and you're competing with yourself. It all ties back together. So here we stand on the edge of greatness, as I've put it. We're looking over the edge, but we can take control of that. We can step forward to those new worlds. We can dare to try. I know we can, and I know some of you've done it. We can dare to express ourselves, just to express ourselves. We can also dare to think ourselves into what we really are, because we are what we think. We can dare to lose everyone else while we're finding ourselves, as the Buddhists put it. We can press the accelerator in the Ferrari, as I put it. We can make those myriad small incremental changes to everything we do, as the Sky team did. And in doing so, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to achieve, as a one great commentator once put it, and I've never forgotten this, we're trying to put lightning into a bottle. And we can all succeed should we choose to do so. I know that. I am absolutely convinced there is nobody in this group that can't have the success they want. So let's go out and bottle some lightning. That's how I will leave it before I open the floor. Uh, but for any um, younger or more daring members of the audience, I should say on behalf of the JLSM, please don't try this at home. Bottling lightning could be dangerous. Anyway, on that note, I would love to open the floor and hear from everybody. I see Stefan has been waiting extremely patiently for a while. Love to hear from you, Stefan. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Um, I'm well, thanks. I always enjoy the topics that you guys bring up. Um, this one is especially poignant for me because... I quite often notice myself trying to put other people into the role of manager, yet verbally I say out loud that I want to be the owner. I want to be in charge. I don't want to have to listen to anybody else. Yet the pattern that I'm actually doing is deferring to others. And um, I noticed this pretty clearly yesterday because, um, or a couple of days ago, the guy who I'm doing all the, uh, the farm work with, he... You know, like anybody else, he has his flaws. He has his good things, his bad. Um, but one of his really, one of the things I really admire is that he's very focused. And when he puts his mind to something, he does it. And he'll quite often ask, he's like, he'll come up with different ideas for like different businesses and stuff. Um, like everything from, you know, selling Christmas trees. You know, what if we use the yard for this sort of stuff? I'm like, oh, that would be great if we did that. He's like, I don't want to do that. I'm trying to give you ideas so you can make money. I'm like, but it's your property. Um, okay. And just like my immediate thought is just do it as a team, do it with someone and not be the one making the shots because then you have to be the one who has to take the responsibility and all that other stuff. And um, I'm tired of doing that. And it also comes down to being assertive as well because the other thing that I'm struggling with two other issues with right now is the the first podcast that I'm part of, I like the guy, but I'm probably going to eventually leave his show just because I like what I'm doing better. I enjoy what we're doing, but it's literally just another two guys debating politics for the most part. Um, and occasionally we bring somebody on. So it's kind of like, eh, there's enough people doing that. And um, whereas on mine, I'm really trying to focus on like highlighting people who I think are interesting or not, um, or interesting or creative. And 
he invited me to be part of the committee for a film festival that they want to do. And on one level, I'm like, I would like to, because it would be, you know, it's a good thing to put on your, on your docket to say like, I was an organizer of a film festival, a week long one, international films, everything. But at the same time, it's very much the Charles show. Um, no matter how many people are on the team. <laughs> and so it's like, I just got to get to the point where I have the courage to turn around and just say like, look, nothing personal. I just, I don't think that this is for me. Like just actually saying no to something rather than just going along with it. Um, because I don't want to cause waves. So I don't know. It's a, uh, brings up a lot of thoughts and then just kind of wondering, like, cause you know, like I, I feel like I don't know entirely where I'm going, but I'm just constantly moving and trying to make something happen. And then go with what works at the moment, um, which is not really the best strategy. But my mindset has changed. And last year, like a lot of us, I mean, you guys probably saw it to some degree. I pretty much fell apart <laughs> um, during the pandemic. Um, being alone for that entire time, that really had an effect. It really made me think because I got fired from the job where I was working that I hated. The job that I love was no longer a viable option. I used to look down at people for accepting welfare and now I'm on welfare. It, it, it's a lot of, it's been a lot in one year, but in a good way, at the same time, it's caused us to, to reevaluate. So thanks. Stefan, that's, um, that's an amazing share and it raises so many thoughts and it touches on what I said about the effects of the pandemic, good and bad, and the, what we were confronted with and the knocks to confidence a lot of people took. But I'm wondering how you see yourself, Stefan, because when you talk and when you're on these calls, I see a confident guy, eloquent, can express himself. I don't think there's anything you couldn't do. So I think we need to talk because I think you've got to try something. It may not be yep. the perfect yep. immediate lifetime business, but I think if you get on the bike and start riding it yourself and doing your own thing, that's when you're going to start learning what works for you, your unique capability to express yourself as you really are. And I think it's time to do it because you've got it, Stefan. You talk very, very clearly and eloquently on all these calls. I can see the anguish sometimes that you're confronting because your confidence is being pulled all over the place. You know, there's nothing like just having a go at something tiny and getting it right and then building on it. You got a lot you could do. You got and that's a lot. That's basically what I mean by being in action a lot is just trying to do small projects that I know that I can accomplish and that I know that I'm going to be proud of myself for accomplishing, whether it's planting a certain amount of things or building a chicken coop or just doing, you know, getting my insurance in order after realizing that I had let it lapse. <laughs> that's fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I, um, stupid mosquitoes. The, uh, I forget what I was going to say. It'll come back to me. Well, yeah, you, you, were, you were doing, you're doing things you, you can succeed at. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with having a go at some projects you can succeed at. You've got to have those small wins. We all need them. We're all the same. We have to have wins. It gets disheartening if you're bashing your head against a brick wall with no wins. You can only yeah. do that for so long. So you've got to launch. You just try something and then try and translate and find in those things what it is you can turn into a business proposition. Yeah. It need not be the last one you launch, but at least you've done it. You've got it under your belt. Move on. Arm. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. You, you go ahead. You go ahead. Um, it's kind of what I've been learning through doing the um, working with this guy is because I'm doing a lot of skills that I don't have originally and I'm learning, like, you know, building stuff. I couldn't even hammer two boards together without making them fall apart. I'm not even kidding about that. That's the sad thing. And now I'm helping him build like stuff. So I'm learning different things and starting to look at, because he's constantly thinking, he's like, I, maybe I should open a Chick-fil-A or for himself or a yeah. laundromat or thing like that. And previously I would have been like, that's the most boring freaking job in the world. Like, why would I want a laundromat? But, you know, listening to him talk, he's like, think how much money you make on a laundromat and how little work you do once you get the investment to put in. I'm like, comparatively, a lot less than some of the jobs that I've worked at. And well, it's it, it just a different way of looking at business that I previously had. And so I'm like, 
looking at options that I would have never considered before. And I think that's why my confidence is a little all over the place because I don't know what I'm going to choose yet. Um, I'm just trying to move forward. Well, Stefan, that's great. You're on the right track. You've just got to choose and something to start with and it needn't be the last choice. I think the thing is not to take on a lot of things at once so you can't give it your all. You've got to give it your all on one thing, get it really rolling, get the confidence up. And I'd love to hear from other members of the group because as I yeah. said, we've seen a lot of people branching out, becoming consultants, trainers, sellers, Amazon sellers, you name it. Just about every direction on e-commerce we could have gone, people have gone. So I'm thinking, Stefan, you know, they were standing there feeling like you're feeling last April, May, particularly, what was it, everybody, that triggered it for you? What, how did it feel to be standing on the edge, not being sure whether you really had enough knowledge or confidence to plunge in, but you did it anyway? I know a lot of people did it. A lot of people decided to have a go. And now I'm seeing people with massive knowledge training other people and setting up businesses. And that all, that all happened because of the pandemic. Um, confidence certainty was suddenly removed from our lives in many cases but you know just by having a go staff and people people started to put their toe in the water and it worked it really worked so if anyone wants to come out and share what they did and how it felt i'd love to hear about that emma has put her hand up I am. oh hang on i'm in the garden Hope you can <laughs> don't worry me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you perfectly. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, 2020. Yeah, I, to I totally get where Stefan's at. It's kind of, I think the key thing is not to put so much emphasis on, you know, how much people earn, what, you know, um, what kind of jobs they're in. It, I think it's more about what do you love doing and kind of just throwing yourself into it. And you've got nothing to lose by just throwing yourself into it. You'll learn along the way. And I think the key big take out of that is you'll you'll change routes quite often. You know, you won't stay on a steady path all the way through, but that's what makes you grow and learn. And, you know, you talk to any entrepreneur or you listen to any like high achiever, you know, like Richard Branson or Elon Musk, you know, that's what they've done along the way. They've they've learned as they've gone along and it's not steady Eddie and nobody's going to give you that. You know, this is the sheet of paper. This is what you need to follow to get yourself there you know it is just all about learning but just think how far you come when you're on that journey as well you know it's small steps that really get you to that final goal and even now you know I set up in February we're in July and oh my god I've taken so many different alternative directions along the way because either you get feedback from people or you think well I've tried that and it's not quite right but oh my god I didn't even realize that this could work and I think if you keep yourself open to opportunities as well that makes a massive difference as well opportunities that you just didn't realize so like you were saying about the festival you know and doing that you know you've got nothing to lose he might not be the best person that you want to do it with but you could go there, somebody could approach you that you'd never even thought of and God, oh my goodness, you know, what a great opportunity. If you've never done it, you'd have never known. So there's lots of things that have happened to me, particularly this year where I've gone, oh, I wouldn't have even thought about that. Or, you know, like I think Neil was talking to the Canadian group and then Neil was like, well, why don't you get involved with the Canadian group? And I was like, yeah, definitely. And then before I knew it, I was doing like a whole group session with the Canadian group. So that wasn't something I'd planned, but it just came my way. It was an opportunity. So just open your eyes to what might be out there and don't be afraid, you know, just go for it. And you've got nothing to lose. And do you know what? Even if you make a pack, couple of quid and you're not making like the big bucks, do you know what? You've probably learnt lots by doing it. Um, and it will be the smaller things that really get you there for your far goal. Um, so, yeah, that's that would be my advice. Just go for it. Great advice, Emma. And, you know, what was it that allowed you or helped you to overcome that fear factor when you were sort of saying, hey, I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to try it. Was there some moment you thought I can change this? Cool. Um, yeah, I think I just um, I heard something like I heard something the other week, but actually it made me realize I was doing that from day one was just do a little bit of research on what you're interested in and then build on it every day so they're saying you know like 15 minutes every day on a area that you like or you've got a passion for before you know it you'll have enough knowledge to then go do you know what? I've got then the confidence to move forward in it and you don't have to have a degree in it you know you could 
you know just build slowly and work your way through it and yeah and just and just get there and I think the you are nervous you know the first time you do anything you're always nervous but actually after you've had a few people say to you oh you know I really liked what you did or oh my god really appreciated your advice on something else yeah that confidence just grows you know nobody's got that on day one it just takes time um and whether it's like on the Amazon journey whether you're doing sourcing or consultancy or you know whatever it is just keep growing and keep learning and just think you know you want to just keep learning throughout your life anyway and before you know it and somebody else said the other day you know you just need that one breakthrough but you could be working in a chip shop and you could have that breakthrough moment that somebody gives you that light bulb moment that you think actually if I never worked in that chip shop I'd have never had that light bulb moment so don't ever put yourself down thinking I'm not earning enough money or looking at your friends and all that kind of thing you know you are you're learning along the way and and you're making things happen definitely so keep going fantastic Emma and I think that's really helpful I really do it's how you've actually done it building on your research in your area every day identifying what you love not necessarily worrying about the immediate return on that but it's a long-term investment Stefan and um, you know John would say and he told me the other day don't sit down and try and record 100 modules in one go you do them as you go you try and do the whole business Stefan in one go you get everything ready you get the whole thing built you get everything made it probably won't happen because it's so big that it's daunting you have to just start and find the easiest way to get to market to get out there to get out there with something and then build on that and as emma's saying incremental bits every day suddenly you're flying and then suddenly you're getting compliments you're getting feedback you're getting wins and everything's going to look very very different stefan very very different so i think you've got to choose one thing to start with and i'm not sure if anyone else would agree with that but i think that's great advice from emma really great and emma's doing it Emma is consulting. She's doing it. She's selling time to people. If I'd said to Emma not that long ago, you're going to be selling time to people all over the world on the internet, she'd have thought I was mad. So, you know, but it's really happening because of the time Emma's put in on those days incrementally to get to the top of this system to go out there and do it. So Emma's doing it. Emma's doing it. So Stefan, I hope that helps. And, you know, we need to talk, Stefan. Let's hook up when you're ready. We can have an hour on the uh, on the Zoom and have a chat. And if I can help, I'd gladly do that. Gladly do that. So I'm not sure if anyone else had any thoughts on standing on the edge of greatness today and the things I've, I've referred to, but I gladly hear from you if you've got any thoughts on what you did, how you managed to step over that brink and go for it. What helped you? What held you back? What was the fear factor? How did you overcome it? I'm sure we'll talk about this again. Looks as though we're going to have an early end. Oh, no, Janet's, Janet's putting a hand up. Great, Janet. Well, I, I don't have what you've asked, which is what's, what's helped me step over the edge of greatness. But I love your sky uh, bicycle story because that's really what I found I have to do for myself. Um, you know, in the end, I have to follow. I have to follow what's right for me. I love all the inspiration. I love being with everybody. But there are certain things, and it could be my, you know, my fear factor, my feeling that I'm not there, et cetera. But in the end, I had to say, you know what, uh, my path is one more of, of, uh, you know, of this way of going. And and if everybody else is doing that and finding success, I'm so happy for them. But that is not my way, and I have to be true to my way, and I have to see what. Um, really, you know, improving myself on, on every front, but, but being true to, to how, to how I learn or how I uh, walk my way in the world, I have to go in that way that will eventually lead me to, uh, to my pure joy. Because it's about joy. Whenever I just focus on money, it's, it's, um, I end up unhappy. I end up in the, in the, uh, no, it doesn't work for me, but to, to find the path of joy that then I can share with others and put that into a business model that, um, that brings it to me. I'm sharing joy. It's coming back and it's coming back with monetary abundance as well. That's the way I need to go. And, and I love just the way that, um, the bicycle thing they worked on all the little 
parts, the things that people would think, I mean, the bedding, who would think of bringing your, your bed with you? But yeah, you're comfortable there, <laughs> that, that, that you rest better, all the little parts. And I'm working on um, things that I've identified for myself that are stumbling blocks, things that are holding me back. So I say, okay, I need to improve that part. I need to work on this. I need to something. And getting myself, is, I don't see it as procrastination. Some will say it that way, but I see it as tweaking all of the things. And the way I deal with fear, it's just the way I deal with it. I, I've never been one to just jump in the pool. <laughs> I'm going to be cold. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at that. But if I have my comfort zone and I have my non-comfort zone and I push out the edges in all the different places by doing, doing something that's just a little bit beyond and then that extends the comfort zone and do something beyond and extends it. Now, I don't know about the Ferrari. I know that when I visited my, one of my um, former students and her husband in, um, uh, it wasn't Switzerland. I'm trying to think of where we were. We drove to Nancy, France, and he said, here, Janet, drive the car. And he says, you know, if you're going 80, you're really holding up traffic. <laughs> and he wanted me just to pounce on that thing. And you know what? I did. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I, yeah, we, we got to Nancy, uh, oh, Luxembourg is where we were. Um, yeah, it, it was, you know, just having the, the confidence from him, but just doing it, just doing it. And so I think, you know, Emma, yeah, you, you know, you're so right. You just, you try this and you, and you, you know, you get some wind, you try that, you, you do, you don't, but that's how you learn. That's how you learn. And so that's, um, I have more, more simple things that I'm working on that will bring some knowledge, um, some Etsy stuff that's going to be going on. And uh, that will help train me in the ways that I need to be trained to go beyond and it will go over to Amazon and it will expand and expand and I'll get to be, you know, it's just I'm working on all these little places. And um, so my path is different, but the same, right? <laughs> but anyway, thank you for all that. The sky, oh, all of everything. I love that Dag Hammarskjöld, all of that. So it's such a good session, uh, Adrian. Thank you so much. That's very kind, Janet. Well, I'm pleased to have discovered you're a secret racing driver. Going down those uh, some of those continental roads with unlimited speed limits. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff, Janet. So I'm glad you <laughs> pressed the accelerator. I'm glad you went for it. I do, I do drive um, faster than I should. <laughs> ah. Faster than speed limits, but I try not to because I don't need tickets. Thank you very much. But yeah, when I'm, but I can. Um, now we know everybody. John's going to get another yeah. YouTube warning at this point um, as the law enforcement agencies move in on Janet. Um, but uh, <laughs> that was great, Janet. I've just got this great image of you piling down the motorway somewhere near Luxembourg. I love it. I love it. But you're absolutely right. And as Emma has said, also, it is your journey. And as I said, you're competing with yourself. So we've just got to remember that we've got to put the blinkers on as they did with horses in the old days and look on our own path at what we're doing. We can spend our whole time worrying about what the next person is doing and lose focus on why we're not working properly. And it's so easy to go down that track. It's like looking over your shoulder all the time in a running race and not focusing on your own pace that you've pre practiced because you know you're going to get around that circuit in a very definite time because you've done it every day. You don't need to look over your shoulder. It's your journey. You're absolutely right, Janet. I love that. And follow the path of joy. Great advice. Great advice. I mean, as Emma was saying, do what you love. Do what you love. Warren Buffett says that as well. Do what you love. Live where you want to live. Eat what you want to eat as he does. And he's done his whole life with his cherry Coca-Cola and things. Um, You've just got to go for it your way because we're all unique and that's why we're going to succeed because if we were all the same there wouldn't be enough room there wouldn't be enough room it's our journey we do it exactly our way with our style and our flavor and that's why we'll get customers because there will be a tribe of customers that likes what we do rather than what the next person's doing so you're absolutely right about that money focus you mentioned as well agree with that Money is important, we need it, but it's not going to bring fulfillment, love and happiness in the long term for what you're doing 
if you're not really aligned with it. And we're going to find that out at some point way down the road when, you know, we realize that uh, we've, we've wasted some years doing something that was pretty empty and left us feeling empty. So the money thing is interesting. Stumbling blocks and identifying them and bolting that together with Emma's daily practice um, and the Sky team's minutiae and every single part of the process they focused on, the answers are somewhere in there. So I'm glad we've recorded this session today for everybody and hope it'll be of some use. We've had some great thoughts from everybody. Um, I will wrap it up unless we've got anyone else that has a burning desire, as John would put it, to express themselves today. But it has been um, very interesting. I felt very strongly about this because, as I said, I've talked to a lot of people in the group and outside the group over recent weeks who I can see are just pausing on the edge, who really can do it. But they're just for one of those reasons, not going for it. So please go for it, everybody, because I know you can do it. And I keep telling you this and I'm seeing it happening and it makes me so happy when I see that. So to round this session off for housekeeping. Keeping again before we finish, uh, EVA tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, USA, which is 10 p.m. UK. Um, that is the Corporate Curio session. So join that if you can, please. Um, and I just remind you again of one of my favorite quotes that every journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, the old Chinese quote. So please take the journey and let's move our feet, as John Lavinia keeps telling us. Let's keep moving our feet while we're thinking. You've got to actually act on your thoughts. Your feet don't move on their own. You've got to start moving them. And, but just remember doing this, and I hope we've demonstrated this today directly, that you're all treasured and supported and you don't have to move your feet alone. You really don't. So, Stefan, you're not moving your feet alone. We're all moving at the same time down our own path in our own direction. And we're all giving each other ideas from what we've learned from that particular journey of ours, help, hoping it might help you. So reach out because uh, everyone's there for you. Everyone's definitely there for you. So thank you everybody for sharing and for listening. Really enjoyed the session. It was a great session and uh, looking forward, hopefully to seeing you on some of the others later, an EVA session and then tomorrow. Take care and thanks to everybody. Rest well. Bye for now. Thank you, Goodbye. Adrian. Thanks, thanks, thanks Janet. Bye. Thanks everybody. Bye for now. Bye, bye.